we have asked a shortcuts and automation expert to come on the show today. And I'm going to sh- make you happy with birdsong. And it's time to organize your closet, Leo. It's time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Aftershocks. Unbelievably comfortable open-ear headphones. Hear music and crystal clear phone calls like never before. Visit iostoday.aftershocks.com and use the code iOS today for $50 off the tech bundle. And by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. Yep, it's that easy. For an extra three months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash iOS today. My closet's actually quite organized. I'll tell you all the things I do. Good, I'd like to know. Yeah. Welcome to iOS Today. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Megan Maroney. And you know why I'm singing? Why? We have a great guest. We do. Uh, We are going to talk to Rosemary Orchard. She does a podcast. Who, by the way, best name in history. It is. It really is. It conjures up an orchard of beautiful rosemary plants. It does. Yes. Yes. Or roses, even. Or roses and Mary. Together, yeah. yeah. So why are why who? Uh, she <laughs> Rose is an expert on automation. Uh, she does a podcast with David Sparks called yes. Automators on Relay FM. Awesome. She has a book about OmniFocus, and oh, I, don't I love know it. In fact, we where. should just get her for OmniFocus on a whole nother day. Yeah. Let's just do OmniFocus. Uh, so, and we have, we just recently did a Relay FM podcast together, and um, I I am so glad to introduce her to you all. From the Vienna Woods, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) Rosemary Orchard. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. It's really great to have you. Yeah, so you were at WWDC. Like the rest of our developer guests, you did not actually have a ticket. (laughs) It seems like no You're kidding. You flew all the way and you couldn't go see it? Uh, Well, I did it last year as well. And honestly, it's in some ways more fun to just sit in a hotel room with a bunch of friends and get amazed by things together because yeah. also I was in the room with Alex Cox when she found out that Dubai Friday was featured in the keynote. Oh. So watching her get That's very excited exciting. about that yeah. was uh, was good fun. And I wouldn't have seen that if I was actually in the keynote hall. So <laughs> I might have actually been missing out. You fly to San Jose to sit in a hotel room and watch the keynote. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, it is true that uh, for a lot of conventions and conferences, the best part is reuniting with old friends and, right. and, and, you know, gathering together and stuff like that. And you had a meetup, you had a Relay FM meetup and you yeah. went to other events and you spoke to some of the creators of Shortcuts. Yes, yes, I did. So I was very fortunate to run into a lot of the Shortcuts team around San Jose and they were super excited about all these updates that they've got showing me all the cool new actions that they've added and how Shortcuts works differently to how it worked before, which was really good fun to talk to them about. I was really excited when they announced uh, Shortcuts because it felt to me uh, like a major step forward for iOS. You know, I, I, I'm sure you're the same way, a fan of Apple Script and then Automator and and I was really worried when they let go of Sal Segoyan, uh, who was the king of, of both. I thought, oh, no, is Apple turning away from automation? And Sal said, don't worry, because so many people on Mac OS use automation. But I had no idea that the iOS team was also working on uh, shortcuts. And uh, yeah. I think they've done a very good job. I would agree. And I, I mean, in some ways, it's kind of a shame that last year the team got so much uh, key, uh, keynote time. Whereas our, this year they got hardly any, but in many ways the updates to shortcuts this year are significantly <laughs> larger than they were last year. That's so Apple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they kind of had this this new very expensive computer that I'm guessing that they wanted yeah. to demo mm-hmm. to their audience. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, they they uh, obviously spent more time on. Uh, but you know, it was clear at the uh, keynote they had a lot to say, and they had a ver- you know only two and a hours to say it, and they really were jamming through it. So I'm actually not surprised. Uh, but fortunately, we have Rosemary Orchard to tell us all the new features. Mm-hmm. So what are the new things that are coming? Should I open a create shortcut so you can sh- you can show us, walk us through? Some well, of the new- unless you're running iOS 13, you're not going to see the first thing that right. I'm talking about at all. Okay, something um, to look forward to. 
Yes, yeah, something to look forward to. So at the bottom of Shortcuts at the moment, there, there's two tabs. There's your library and the gallery. And what they've done in iOS 13 is those two have just moved out a little bit to make room for a new one in the middle called Automations. Ooh. And this one allows you to, as you may guess from the name, automate your shortcuts. So you can, for example, when you open an app, have it do something like start a timer and a time tracking system for you so that when you're invoicing a client later, you know how much time you actually worked on it. Um, and when you get to a location or you leave a location, you can have it send a message. And when it reads an NFC tag, it can run a shortcut. And home automations have moved in there as well. So you can create automations that you, you share with people versus the ones that you keep to yourself, which is pretty awesome. This is actually a huge update because inter-process automation has always been very challenging uh, on it iOS. Has. And so are they the, using a URL scheme or do they have something built in that's a little more powerful? Uh, I believe that they're actually using the, the things built right into the base of the operating system. Mm. I have not dived into this to find out exactly how it's working, but it does seem to be working on similar to something like a cron job, which you might have running on a server that just runs automatically based on time. But this doesn't just run based on time. It's running based on location and NFC tags and Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth devices and all sorts of things. So when you huge. put in your AirPods, you can have it play your favorite playlist. That's huge. Oh. Yeah. So massive. So that's really good. So yeah, because the OS knows a lot about what's going on in the world. It knows when you plug in your headphones or you uh, open up your AirPods. Uh, but in the past, it's been kind of siloed away only for Apple mm -hmm. to see. But now uh, developers can see it too. That's that's incredible. Yeah, that is. And because Shortcuts now comes pre-installed on every device as well, you don't need to tell people to go download it from the App Store. You can just send them a shortcut, assuming that you've gone through settings with them and uh, enabled untrusted shortcuts, uh, because that is also now a thing. If it doesn't come from the gallery, then you have to turn it on, turn on the ability to accept these, which I feel is a, is a good feature as well, because it remove some of the potential security risk because it could theoretically start saving all of your calendar information into a text file and uh, save a Dropbox and get that information, send a message in the background to somebody. Um, yeah, as but, you make shortcuts more powerful, you also have to make them more secure. And we've talked exactly. about that on the show before because I like to use, I like to go to the shortcuts subreddit and download <laughs> shortcuts. And that is potentially hugely dangerous if you're not careful and don't review the shortcuts. So I think this is uh, a smart thing. But I'm thrilled that Apple is basically putting Gatekeeper, the Mac OS security system, into, into shortcuts. And I'm thrilled that Apple did that instead of saying, well, yeah. no, we better keep it only to the gallery. So that's really good yes. news. Yeah. I mean, I do wish they'd added a shortcut store. They've got an iMessage app store. Why couldn't they have yeah. a shortcut store where I, as a developer, could then submit shortcuts so that people could then... You know, it could go through app review. It could get that verification from Apple and then people could download it. I'd be perfectly happy to do all of that for free, you know, because I, I make shortcuts and give them away to people for free anyway. So being able to submit them to Apple would be an extra step that I, I feel that it would have been very nice. But that's not there yet. Maybe next year. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that eventually. Yeah. The, I think the the real question on, for me on shortcuts is uptake. Uh, and this was a problem with Automator as well. Um, Apple has done a great job. They've made a really great utility, but I think it, it's it's a little more complicated. It's not real easy to use, and I would guess 90%, maybe 99% of uh, iOS users don't use shortcuts. We're always lobbying to get... It's the power users that use them, but, uh, but honestly, I think everybody can benefit from them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, from, uh, from iOS 13 onwards, it will be pre-installed on every device. So when you download iOS 13, if you don't have shortcuts installed, it will install it for you. Ah, um, excellent. As I just go, because I was running the test flight version, and I ended up with two versions of shortcuts on my on my iPad when I installed it on day one. Uh, which Hallelujah. Is a to everybody. That'll help a lot, because you had to download it before. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that'll help yeah. an awful lot. That's great. Yeah. It's really gone beyond, you know, shortcuts was really workflow when they bought workflow. But it seems like it's really gone well beyond now what Workflow. Do, is there anything from Workflow you miss in Shortcuts? Um, I mean, the ability to talk to the developers more easily, perhaps. Yeah, but yeah. I, uh, they're, they're still very receptive to feedback. And if you if you use the Apple feedback file, you know, they, they, uh, some of the developers have publicly said on Twitter, you know, don't forget to send us the feedback. We really do want this. So Good. now that they're on the iOS development cycle, you know, they, they need to get it in by the time iOS is ready to ship. They can't miss that deadline so if there's feedback they, they really want it and i'm very pleased to hear because i was talking to some of the team and they were very excited saying yeah send send that send us radar for this send us feedback on that and things like that so i've done all of that 
I've just air airdropped Megan a random oh. meme. Yeah, you did. Just airdropped <laughs> me a meme. I'm sorry. Sometimes I look at these shortcuts and I go, I have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so on the security aspect, just to be clear, so uh, unlike the App Store, they'll just warn you um, if it comes from a third party, and but then you get to decide whether you want to install it. Or not. Yeah. So, so what happens is if you try and install a shortcut, then then it pops up and it tells you what services it it needs access to. So it will tell you if it needs to access your calendar, reminders, OmniFocus, contacts, and things like that. And you you can choose whether or not to install it. it. But in the settings application, shortcuts has now moved from the so in, inside of settings you've got a list of all of the Apple applications like calendar and reminders, and then below that there's a list of all the other applications. Shortcuts has moved from there up to the Apple section um, and it's in there now and you can turn on and off um, to allow sharing and receipt of uh, untrusted shortcuts, which means that also if you want to share your shortcuts, you need to turn that on. Um, so of course, that's the first thing I did. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Leo has been in search of a shortcut, as you know now from personal experience. Finally, we get an expert on. <laughs> he is often late, and uh, so we have no idea when he's going to get here. I so texted you today, but I had to do it like a savage yeah, by like hand, an animal. So typing it in. Is there a way for an automated text message to say, Megan, I'm on my way. I'm so sorry. I'll never be late again until next week or something like that. And <laughs> let's add a little Philip. I'd love to do a glimpse style pin that says that she can look at and says you, she could see me making my way here oh. so she knows if i'm lying for instance in oh. fact it'd be great if that pin could show me in the shower because <laughs> usually that's what i text you is before i get in the shower oh i see yeah. so it could know if he's lying or i'll not. be there any minute now okay so he, all right but give us the a, first part and then it, it, we can figure out a way to get the second part in. <laughs> well first part is definitely possible right now if you want to do this as of the moment that we are talking you need to use if this and that right um to do that's this what i didn't want to do because it's not built into the shortcuts exactly. capability and but, it's not great it, it yeah. works pretty well i'll give i'll give the if this and that folks you know credit it, it's a good feature but it doesn't work as well well, something completely integrated into the operating right. system. Yeah, because there's as, a delay. There's a lag in between yeah. the time that it sends a signal. Because, But it sounds like these new iOS 13 features will allow me to, you know, check my iPad and my location. Yes. Um, and I, unfortunately, have broken my ankle, so I've been struggling to check the location <laughs> of these things a little bit. I can't go. I can't moment. move. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you I break your not. ankle in San Jose? Yes, I did. I fell off a scooter. Um, <laughs> 10 out of 10. Do not recommend falling off scooters. <laughs> I, I don't recommend scooters, period. Unless well, you're 12. Well, it was very fun until I fell off. Yeah. So. yeah. Do they have them? Yeah. Do they have those companies where you yeah. are? It's yeah, they do. And, They're all yeah. around Vienna. There's like five of them. Yeah. And until I fell off a scooter and broke my ankle, I had all five apps installed on my iPhone in a folder <laughs> with an emoji of a scooter. Uh, and then I fell off and I decided that maybe I should not ride scooters anymore because so apparently I'm not good at it. The next generation is electric pogo sticks. There's pogo sticks for rental now in San Francisco. So again, I would recommend staying off of either of those. Get a bike <laughs> next time. Yeah, I mean, let's just go with I'm not great at the balance thing, so I should probably skip <laughs> bicycles as well. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you could break more than your ankle on a bicycle, so maybe not. Yeah, yeah you certainly can. <laughs> anyway, to go back to your, your shortcut, as of iOS 13 in September, you should be able to, and this is assuming that everything stays as it is and any kinks in the system are, are worked out before then, uh, be able to create an automation that says, when I leave my house, send Megan a message. Yes. And, uh, well, it might not be able to do the location right away. What you could do is you could have it generate a random number, <gasps> multiply it by 10, and then say, I owe you X dollars or cookies, depending on. Multiply <laughs> it by 10 cents. Okay. Ten Ten quid. <laughs> Ten more years that you continue to work here without retiring. Ten. Oh, that's good. That's what she really wants. <laughs> yeah, that's what she really go. wants. Uh, subtract 10 from my age, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is really good. That is that is a good example of what we can't do now, but we'll, we'll be able to do in iOS 13. Get access to these system level information. That's yeah. going to really, I think, explode what you can do with shortcuts. Yes. And actually what you can also do is when it turns off your alarm in the morning, it can actually go through and it can run a shortcut from then as well. So it can even remind you. By the way, you know, you've got a show at 9.30, right. which means that you need to leave the house at 8.30 right. and things like that. And then it can also set alarms or reminders and ping you at those times. 
uh, which may be useful or not. I'm going to just send see. texts to Megan. Leo's alarm has gone off. Mm -hmm. Leo is snoozing. Yeah. Leo is snoozing again. Mm -hmm. Leo Actually, is getting... you, you can do it based on the snooze button as well. So. Uh-huh. See? See? <laughs> yeah. See? Leo is frying some eggs. Yes. <clears throat> Leo is sipping his coffee. Right. Leo's having another coffee. Wear your Apple Watch in the shower. Like, if it gets wet, then you could <laughs> Leo's automatically... Leo's watch is wet. <laughs> I don't know if watch is getting wet because the, the what actually one thing I do miss from workflow is they had an Apple Watch app, yeah. which Shortcuts does not have. Mm. And of course, you can trigger things, you know, by talking to your Apple Watch. But I don't know. Sometimes I feel like a bit of a dork talking to my Apple Watch in public, especially when yeah. it then talks back to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's like I don't need you to talk to me right now. Like <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's, it's useful. Just Apple has a fix for that. <laughs> Keep your AirPods in at all times. Yeah. Then you have to talk yeah, to your the, AirPods. That's yeah. worse. Yeah. That, yeah, I mean, though the HomePods, are, the AirPods are really good at taking over for, uh, from the yeah, Hey Siri because that's, right. that's the other element of this. If you've got seven or eight devices, which some of us may have, um, <laughs> and they're all running iOS 13, and they they walk your watch is talking to you. Your watch just talked to you. There you go. <laughs> Demonstrating exactly why I don't like that feature. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I can't get Siri to respond I know. at all. I was all. really surprised because we, you know, we try to have not people not say the Amazon wake word because it does wake everything up. But we I don't care always, about Siri. But Siri, it's always never yeah. wakes. Well, but the thing is, is because this is an Apple Watch. If you lift it at the right angle to yeah. talk right. to it, I'm doing it with the wrist that's not wearing the watch now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, then um, you, you can't know, turn that off. Listening. But you like it, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you actually like that. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's useful until it randomly not. starts talking during the podcast. I'm, I have to say, I have so many devices from all the manufacturers yeah. in my office here, in my office at home, that I am so used to things just randomly speaking to me mm -hmm. all the time. Sometimes that's it gets me. A bit creepy after a while, though. Um, no, but that's the thing. I'm used to it now. They're my they're my little they're my little friends. <laughs> Those like two gremlins them. running around. My little around. friends, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you have some favorite uh, automations and also some automations you've been using since you hurt your leg. And I know you have a video, so just let us know when we should play that video. Oh, cause, oh. Um, yeah. is this like what happened after I broke my ankle? No, no. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, just I, I decided to skip the gory bruising for, for all the viewers. <laughs> I know everybody will be very disappointed. Oh, <laughs> and then you had a ride home on the plane in with a cast on and a sore ankle? I did not have a cast because I thought I'd only sprained my ankle. Uh, um, and also I misunderstood my travel insurance and did not think my travel insurance would cover healthcare in America. Uh, so I decided that if it's only a sprain, I'd be fine. I'd just go home. And then if it started hurting, I'd go to the hospital and get checked out. And uh, so I came home and went, this really hurts. I'm going to go to the hospital I'm and get checked out. Did. And they're like, yep, it's yeah, broken. It's broken. <laughs> you know, better not to know till you get home. Kind of like, you know, just defer that information. Certainly cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to healthcare in America. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, what is what are some of, what are some of the features of iOS 13 shortcuts that you are most excited? About? Give me an example of a uh, of a routine well, that you're most excited about. Well, one of the ones I've been using a lot um, because I do have iOS 13 installed on a few devices, not all of them, because I need to do a presentation next week, which involves using. Uh, devices that are stable. Um, so, uh, <laughs> of course. But on, on some of the devices, I've, I've installed uh, iOS 13, so I've got the new shortcuts. And one of the ones I've been using is the one which uh, triggers a couple of HomeKit scenes. And it also airplays uh, music to my HomePod because now you can set an AirPlay destination which is great so that you can actually have it. And um, if I was slightly more mobile, I could have it where I come through the door, set my AirPlay destination from my HomePods to, from my AirPods to my HomePod. And when I leave, do the inverse. So you uh, come home, you're listening to music and you, or actually, I'm sorry, you're listening to your fine podcast and you're, and you come home, you open the door and automatically your phone will say, oh, uh, Rosemary's home. And then we'll, we'll, we'll start playing it through your HomePod. Yeah, so if you could have it do that when you connect to a specific Wi-Fi network oh. or when you get to a specific location. Oh. It depends on what you need. So when I get to work, I can have it play my theme song in my ears mm -hmm. as I walk in the yes, door. Like, yeah, the Darth Vader theme song. Yeah, dum, yeah. dum, dum, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. bum. Yeah. Actually, that's a great idea. That's going to be my theme song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this yeah, is real. That's David really Spice cool. Saying he's going to have it play Star Trek theme, uh, Star Wars theme tune as soon as he got home every time. So. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What? Uh, give me some more. Uh, this is these are the new shortcuts in iOS 13. But before I before you say that though, uh, 
how is it not super stable iOS 13? We're going to get a public beta next month, I think. And should we not yeah, do it? So, so I would highly advise yeah. people to wait for the okay. public beta unless there's a very, very good reason to install the developer beta, such as being a developer. Right. Um, which, which you uh, are. You have to. De you're I developing am. shortcuts. I am a developer. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so and so, I've installed it on a few devices, but it will mess up your iOS 12 devices as well. Uh, uh -huh. If you've got the iOS 13 beta installed and getting my iCloud drive to work again, uh -oh. took me a good couple of hours uh -oh. uh, across all my devices, and that was not fun. Uh -oh. So uh, I highly recommend waiting. Last year was an anomaly with it being so stable so early. Um, this year, it's back to its usual wobbly self, and I am not criticizing Apple with that. It is a developer beta. We should expect it to be wobbly, and in general, we'll wait for the public beta. Wobbly is a great word for mm -hmm. that. I love, I love wobbly, uh, which is also what Rosemary is with her ankle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, because, yeah, what you've just described makes me desperately want this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, few other things that you can do is you can also do things like set a wallpaper. So when you turn off your alarm every day, you could actually have it say, check for us, NASA's image of the day, grab it and set it to be your iPhone wallpaper oh. and then oh. have it grab, I don't know, the cutest cat of the day. I'm sure there's a feed for that somewhere and set that to your lock screen wallpaper and things like that, which is also That's very nice. brilliant. I yeah. need that. Uh, yeah. Computers will do that, but to have a mobile device do that. Mm -hmm. And that would be true for an iPad or an iPhone, right? Yeah. Yeah, it would. Wow. So. I really like that. Is there anything in iPad OS that's different uh, in iPad OS from what you can do on the iPhone? Well, there's a couple of things you can't do, which is health stuff. So right, uh, this right. has been true for quite some time. You can't do any of the health things on an iPad because your health info is only on an iPhone. Right. Um, I am hoping that they're going to fix that at some point because there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to view my health information on an iPad. Right. Imagine viewing your EKG or ECG, right. uh, depending on your language, on your iPad. That would be so much better than an iPhone, which, you know, even if you've got a nice 10s Max, it's still not huge yeah no it, it, it makes no sense if you have an ipad and an iphone that they can't commute the health should have the same yeah. information on both yeah, yeah. So, same so just as the watch communicates with the phone why wouldn't the phone communicate with the ipad mm -hmm. yes and speaking of the watch you can actually uh have a trigger so when you start or end a workout on your apple watch uh that can trigger shortcuts as well <gasps> so it could say what a good boy i am <laughs> yeah and it could also start your workout playlist oh uh, yeah nice. or order pizza yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. be needing Finish pizza in about 10 pizza. minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Add Apple Pay the cash to the to the delivery person. <laughs> can I, so can you automate Apple Pay? Uh that's been in there for some time <gasps> being able to send uh money that's via I dangerous. believe Venmo, Apple Pay and I believe there's one other. Unfortunately, I don't have access to these being a non-US person. Right. So. Oh. That's very dangerous. So like every time Leo's yeah. late, he Shh. could Venmo me $10. <laughs> Theoretically, I could yes. put a, a swear complication yeah. on my uh, that on my is watch. Good. Yeah, send her a nickel. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what about some shortcuts have you you've used um, since you hurt yourself since you broke your ankle? <laughs> well, I mean, one of them I mentioned. So I've got HomeKit scenes, uh, which is really useful. Uh, so I created um, a emergency lighting scene. Uh, so if I wake up in the middle of the night, usually I'm okay to wander around the house in complete darkness. But surprisingly, on crutches, this becomes more dangerous. Mm. Uh, so thankfully, we have Philips Hue lighting pretty much everywhere. Um, and then we also have a light strip plugged in uh, under the side of the bed. And so I have emergency lighting. So if I tell my watch to turn on the emergency lighting, it will quite happily talk back at me and say, 10-4, working on that. Wow. Or something along those lines. And then it will turn on the lights so that then I can find my crutches in the dark and get up and hobble to the bathroom as happen needs to happen every so often emergency lighting that's a good phrase yeah so it just turns it. on I a like few that. lights it turns yeah. them on red so it doesn't ruin my night vision nice. and also so it's less likely to wake up my boyfriend yeah because uh, he still has to go to work of course. yeah now is he um a geek i hope yes he is oh, a thank geek, God. but he's not so much into the home kit stuff as i am so uh, that, we've we've installed buttons and things in places where yeah. switches used to be so that yeah. he doesn't have to get out his phone and he is not a fan of talking to devices to get them to do yeah. what he wants or needs um so so the buttons we've got some logic hit pop buttons and some of the Philips Hue switches and those are dotted around the house as needs be I've seen this as Stacy Higginbotham's husband mm -hmm. is has to put up with Stacy right as much does mine he says can we just have and your husband that's yeah. right mm -hmm. can we just have the blinds open manually mm -hmm. please I don't want to have to talk to them <laughs> 
<laughs> so David Sparks also had this problem, my co-host on Automators. And what he did is he got the Lutron Caseta light switches yes. and he just replaced all of his light switches, which means that for people who want to yes. press a light switch, they can press a light switch, but he can also have all it's, the automations. It's brilliant. Uh, which just, I feel is a very good middle ground. Stacy was just talking about that yeah. last week. That was her pick of the week. The because, Aurora, is that what it was called? No, the Caseta. Yeah, uh, she had yeah. another one. Yeah, maybe yeah, the Aurora, it was and it's one. a feature because your problem is always that like people someone will come turn in and them turn off, my lights off. And then oh yeah, don't. that happens to me as well. Yeah. Or my boyfriend just unplugs the things that are turned on when he wants them to turn off. He's I like, can't figure out how to turn it off. Right gonna... here. You had to crawl under a table to unplug this, and there's a power button right on the front of it. Why didn't you just press it? Yes. These, yeah, these relationships are not easy. It's not easy. Uh, no. Yeah. Not easy. My wife just says you can't die because I won't know how to do. I won't know how to turn anything on. Yeah, exactly. That's, that, that's also a solution. <laughs> not to die. Yes. So I have a question. So a lot of people were doing scripting and such automation through iTunes. Um, and now yes. we know iTunes is gone. What happens Thank God. Now? But then what happens to those people who are using iTunes to do automations? Well, the great news for those people is uh, both the music and the TV apps on Mac OS have had the scripting libraries from iTunes imported. Nice. So anybody using all of these Apple scripts, like the things available from Doug Scripts, Doug Scripts, I'm not sure how to pronounce his first name, um, uh, can continue to download those and use them as they previously were. That won't be a problem. So <sighs> that's great news for them. So this is also an important thing for people to understand that uh, not only does Apple provide a lot of facilities in the operating system, but apps can also, as I think people know that with Siri shortcuts, add additional uh, capabilities. Are you seeing a lot of development? This was a kind of a semi problem on the Mac OS with Apple script. People needed to make you know, their apps scriptable. Are you seeing developers really jump on this bandwagon? Well, not so much on the Mac, though. Omni Group are doing a lot of things. They're creating a cross-platform JavaScript automation so oh, that you wow. can uh, script any of OmniFocus, OmniPlan, nice. Grapple, and Outliner uh, with one script on all your devices, which I'm very much hoping to see a lot of other developers doing. Greg Pierce, who you had on recently, is doing that with drafts as well. He's going to be bringing actions to the Mac. They're also written in JavaScript. Nice. And JavaScript does seem to be very much... The, app, uh, the language for yeah. automation yeah. as it is now. Ironic because JavaScript for automation built into Mac OS is nowhere near as stable as AppleScript. <laughs> yeah, I you know I don't know why they wouldn't use ECMAScript or OS. Well, anyway, that's another story. But how about on iOS? You find developers uh, on iOS are pretty savvy about this and are making sure they have hooks. So a lot of developers last year were very keen to jump on the shortcuts bandwagon, but the problem with the shortcuts that they could donate, which I still think is the wrong word. I think somebody meant denote and typo there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then it just stuck. And Stranger they, they things have, have happened, now. yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so so the, the thing with the shortcuts that they had to donate last year is it was the I can do an action and right. I don't get input and I don't give output. Oh. Um, and that was very problematic. So applications like Carrot, which is a really great snarky weather application, um, were able to work around this by copying stuff to the clipboard and then parsing things out of this mess that was on the clipboard, which was a nice little dance, but it wasn't very user friendly. So for anybody who didn't know what they were doing, it was just like, what on earth am I doing here? Why does this not work? I give up. Um, now in iOS 13, not only will developers be able to pass input and output, they will also be able to request parameters which means that all of these shortcuts that previously had to build, be built in by the shortcuts team. So, for example, adding a task to OmniFocus, you can specify a defer date, a due date, uh, a project, notes, things like that. That previously had to be managed by the shortcuts team, which is in absolutely no way maintainable thinking of all of the apps that are on the App Store. Now developers can do that and they can donate those shortcuts to shortcuts. So, Good. I hope that uh, this is widely adopted because having that interoperability between apps is going to go a long way to making iPad a, a useful desktop tool. Uh, yes, I think it will. I, and from the developers I was talking to, they're very excited about yeah, this. Good. Well, I think of, you know, photographers, I don't know if you're a photographer, Rosemary, but uh, I, I think every photographer wishes they could use their iPad Pro as, as, as they do their Mac or their Windows PC. And, and well, they can app, now because they can plug in their camera. I know, and hallelujah. They can plug it into their iPad, and it goes right and to Lightroom. No more importing I into know. photos. But can I also do some scripting? Because I think there's a lot of things uh, photographers would like to script. 
Well, that will very much depend on what the Adobe people yep. write into their applications. Oh, well. So I, <laughs> if I was if I was to talk to Adobe today and they have no automation plans right for the Lightroom, and I, I'm guessing here I haven't talked to anybody from Adobe at all. Or if anybody from Adobe wants to talk to me about automation, talk to Rosemary, to please. Um, I would highly recommend that they either look at doing a lot of things with shortcuts, or that they um, they they take a leaf out of the Omni Group's book and the drafts book and they write their own automation options with JavaScript, uh, which can be run then on both platforms because the brilliance of JavaScript is it is built into iOS. They don't have to build a JavaScript engine for oh, like really? it's already in oh. iOS. That's, is that part of WebKit? Yeah, exactly. It's part okay. of WebKit, which okay. is why JavaScript is so popular. That's why apps like Scriptable exist right. because JavaScript is built into iOS. It's probably my least favorite scripting language, but at least you can do it. Exactly. And it's also much easier to do it because there's a great application called Pythonista where you can script things in Python. Right. But he's had to port all of Python to the iPad to do that, which is a right. lot more work than just taking the right. finished JavaScript and going, yoink, <laughs> right. add stuff to it, done. Yeah, I love Pythonista. It would be wonderful if I could use that to, to, to automate it. But I guess JavaScript's not so far off. And that's, uh, I think, a lot of developers, almost everybody understands and can write Python. I mean, uh, JavaScript. So it's better than nothing. It anyway, is, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I could talk to you for another hour. I love I Rosemary. You know, one thing I want to say, though, she's she's brilliantly simulating cat ears <laughs> by sitting just in front of her picture on the wall. <laughs> You've moved now. You've ruined it. But it, but oh, it was sorry. very I'm clever. Sorry. It was very clever. I thought... Is is she subliminally doing cat ears? <laughs> Subliminal I'm cat ears. Trying to move back into position. <laughs> they were there perfect. We there. You yeah, look at that. I looked for a moment. I looked and I thought, wait a minute, what? But now I see it's just a picture in the back. Well, I am a cat person. Uh, well, how did I know that? How did I know that? Uh, well, thank you so much for joining Such us. We've pleasure. already kept you an hour later than I said. Yeah, so, I apologize. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I'll put a link to the video that we have, which is some of your automations. And um, go yeah. to automationorchard.com. That's Rosemary's site. And then uh, RealAFM uh, slash autom automators for the podcast, yeah. which can be um, yeah. downloaded anywhere. And then you're Rosemary Orchard on Twitter. Yes, yes, I am. And, and my personal website is also rosemaryorchard.com. Automation Orchard is just where I collect tons oh. of automation oh. articles from around the web. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's all available in JSON APIs as well. So oh. people can search oh, for everything happy. if they like. Happy, happy. Is this your day job, Rosemary, or do you work for somebody? I, I work for a university. I'm a developer. I'm a web developer, actually. Oh, so. interesting. Okay. How interesting. Yeah. 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 So you like JavaScript. You have to. Uh, well, I mean, I, I work with JavaScript. <laughs> do you, could, could I use something like TypeScript? I probably couldn't to do the JavaScript on uh, iOS. Probably not. I, I think at the moment it would be very difficult. Yeah. Uh, that's not to say it won't happen or it's not possible. I just don't think that you would get the payoff that you're looking right. for right now. So uh, a lot of people who loathe JavaScript for very good reasons, although it's, got, it's gotten much better, uh, use kind of uh, a, a layer like TypeScript or maybe a, a closure script uh, to write it uh, for web dev. And it's a much better way to write it. But unfortunately, I think you have to work at the at the bare level. Yeah. But you know what? You're not writing big, long programs, so it's not as difficult, probably. You is should there, look at some of my draft scripts sometime. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, is there a, a good JavaScript editor for iOS? Well, I really like Coda, which is made by the folks over at yes. Panic. That yes. is a great editor and it integrates with working copy as well, which means you can save all of these scripts into Git, um, any Git version control system. And then you, if you if you mess anything up, then you can revert it, which is wonderful. I am downloading. I paid for Coda years ago uh, yeah. and I'm going to download it right now. And what was the other uh, program you recommended? Working copy, which means it makes it very easy to save everything into Git. Um, yes, as well. and I do that as well. So that's a, so there is a fairly good workflow available. That's nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's do also you, really do, nice if you use uh, Coda to write Markdown. Then you can also have a uh, working copy open on the other side to preview your Markdown. Very nice. Okay, I'm downloading them both right now. <laughs> thank you, Rosemary Orchard. What a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. So, is there anything yes, else we need well. to point to? Rosemary I don't Orchard, think so. Okay. Other than this lovely show. <laughs> It's great to have Thanks you. Thanks so you. much. Hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. You know what would work great with her cat ears? What? Some Aftershocks headphones. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
be <laughs> so perfect. Bye, Rosemary. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Time to mention our sponsor. Then we have more from iOS today in mm -hmm. just a bit. Uh, Aftershocks. I, I was funny. I was wearing them all day yesterday because I was talking. I was uh, FaceTiming with mom. And I like to, when I'm FaceTiming, especially on the iPad, I don't want it to blare throughout the house. So I, I put on my aftershocks. She can hear me very clearly because the aftershocks have a microphone. I can hear her great. And they're so comfortable that I can wear them all day. I often forget to take them off. And I can also hear it when Lisa wants to talk to me. So unlike plugging in headphones that go into your ear and make it impossible to hear anything else, aftershocks sit over your ear. They use a patented bone conduction technology to give you great sound without blocking your hearing. It's great for working out. If you're a runner or you bicycle outside, you need these so that you can listen to your music as you run, but still hear vehicles coming up behind you, people yelling at you, that kind of thing. It's really for safety a great way to wear headphones. They are weather resistant, IP55 certified, so they repel sweat, dust, and moisture. You know, if it's raining, don't worry, wear your aftershocks. Because they're not in your ear, I, I don't know about you, but anything that goes in my ear, after a while, I get fati ear fatigue. Because they're not in your ear, you never get fatigued. They don't press hard on your temples or anything. They have a very lightweight titanium wraparound headband. It's very flexible, keeps them in place without pressing your head. So you frankly won't even know you're wearing them. I love it. If you do a lot of conference calls or you listen to music uh, while you're programming or while you're running, this is the greatest. Enjoy crystal clear phone calls and music like you've never heard before. Yes, they sound really good. I was skeptical about the whole idea of bone conduction, but it actually really works. And they have something called premium pitch, which guarantees a premium audio experience with wide dynamic range, rich bass. They even bundle a pair of uh, earplugs in with the package so you can try them and see that you're still hearing it it's not kind of like going around and going into your ears no in fact the bass sounds better with it with the earplugs in it's just wild a wireless bluetooth 4.1 with multi-point pairing that's nice for me because i pair it to everything that way whatever i'm near i can then uh use the aftershocks to answer the phone so it's on my mac i have it paired i have it paired on my ipad on my laptops it's fantastic. Six hours of continuous music and calls on one charge. Ten-day standby time. I'll tell you what. At the end of the day, uh, yesterday, I just plugged it back in, and then it's ready to go tomorrow. It's always there, and I love it. Charged in a half and a, one and a half hours fully. There's a hassle-free two-year warranty. I think these are more durable, frankly, because and you're not going to lose them, which I really like. There's no, you know, I lost one AirPod thing here. These aftershocks, they're they're attached behind your head, so they're they're great. Safer for driving, any outdoor activity. Better to use around the house because people can talk to you. I just love Aftershocks. We have a special deal on the Aftershocks tech bundle right now. It includes a Trex Air. Uh, those, are, those are the ones I wear. The Trex Air, very comfortable. A pop socket, large portable storage case, portable power bank. So if you're on the road, you can keep your Aftershocks charged up in a travel tumbler and insulator. All of that $50 off if you uh, in the U.S. only. Sorry, Rosemary. If you go to iostoday.aftershocks.com and use the offer code iostoday. iostoday.aftershocks.com. Use the code iostoday. We're, we're just huge fans. Oh, look at that. Proud sponsor of iOS Today. That's I us. That's us. <laughs> Thank you, Aftershocks. They really support us. We really appreciate that. And we appreciate it when you support us by using that special address, iostoday.aftershocks.com. Don't forget the offer code, iOS today. I sincerely love my aftershocks. Lisa borrows them all the time now. She said, I have a conference call. I said, okay, you can have them. <laughs> iostoday.aftershocks. Maybe she needs to get you another pair for Father's Day so she can keep your old ones. That's Father's Day. Mm -hmm. That's <gasps> Sunday. Did you know that? Jeez Louise. <laughs> you don't need to know that. I better get to work. Well, you're, you know, I do you're need. I have dad. a father, you, you know. You have a dad. <laughs> All right. Okay, so some news. Now, we talked about this on Twitter on Sunday, but um, for those of you who weren't watching, iOS 13 is going to be the beginning of the end of 3D Touch. Uh, Which is bizarre. Yeah. So but 3D I'm not unhappy about it. I guess, no, I guess people, first of all, all, not all the phones did it. Yeah. So that's kind of hard to have a thing that not everything does. Yeah, I think right? it was after, 
eight or I it was uh, iPhone seven or iPhone eight. I can't even remember yeah. which was the first one. Yeah, you have was, to because you have to have some special stuff in the screen. So yeah, so you push a you know you do a little hard press and it does certain things. The one I used was when you know you're getting someone's phone number. You know that happens to me all the time. Um, hey baby, you hard press the uh, the phone and then create new contact. See, that I didn't even know I, that. Yeah, I know that's the problem. You don't know about them. They're hidden. And so now you still have that functionality because, but instead of a hard press, it'll be a long, a long press. press. Yeah. So, and that's frankly how the phones who didn't have 3D right, worked, anyway. how Android phones work, how every other phone in the mm -hmm. world works. So it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then the, I think the only other long press thing that they're going to be leaving is the um, camera, which again, I didn't know that this worked either, but if you, um, if you not long press, but if you 3D touch the camera, it just opens, which I never knew that that did that. Um, and oh, there's also, that's the, again, that's the, the real problem. There's all sorts of hidden light. features so. and, and undiscoverable hidden features are always a bad thing in design. In fact, it's one of the things that concerns me a little bit about iOS 13 is the, <laughs> the pinch to cut, the open to mm -hmm. save and the three finger swipe to undo. I'm never going to remember that. Do you use those on the Mac at all? No, like the, they yeah. think you could do that on the Mac. The three finger <laughs> goes to a new desktop, and I only, oh, I do do that all the time. Oh, you do. I do do that all the yeah. time. Yeah, because I'm, a, you know, I've become, and I think it's because of the iPad, a big fan of keeping apps full screen. Mm -hmm. You know, occupying the whole screen. Once they do that, they become a workspace. So if you if you open your app on the Mac, they become a workspace, and then. You can you can move from workspace to workspace. It's it's odd because it really is more like the iOS way of working, mm -hmm. where everything is full screen and you're just doing that swipe along the bottom to move along. Mm -hmm. But I find that a sensible way to work. I want to use all the real estate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do use the three finger swipe. I also use the control. I think it's control arrow left and right will do it as well. Not not on iOS, but it will do it on uh, Mac OS. And you know. Windows and, and, and Linux also have that capability. Mm -hmm. the, that's the only problem I have is I have different keystrokes right. for each operating. Yeah. I have to say, what operating system? Oh, yeah, it's a super key down for Linux. Oh, yeah, it's control Windows key left, right for Windows. But but if you once you've got those memorized, it's a, I think it's a great way to work. So mm -hmm. what were we saying? We were talking about 3D Touch going away. But um, the other news... <laughs> Uh, Wired had a really interesting story this week about the Apple's new noise app that will um, appear in iOS 13, which we didn't really talk too much about. This is about. huge, I think. But, so Very I thought it was worth big. bringing up because uh, hearing loss is, is a really uh, important <sighs> Alas, issue. Alas, it and is. What Wired points out is this is one of those things similar to the Screen Time app that really is Apple protecting us from Apple. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like you want to use your iPhone because it's so amazing, but then they, so they create screen time, so you use it less, or you want to constantly use your AirPods um, or listen to Apple Music, but, you know, maybe it's too loud. So it's it's an interesting turn of events for technologies, to technology protecting us, new technology protecting us against technology. Um, so, yeah, it, it but it does solve the problem of hearing loss, which happens gradually and what the noise app will do on your Apple Watch, or on I guess just on your Apple Watch, it'll notify you if uh, and tell you in terms of duration, like okay, you can only be in this club or at this concert for this amount of time, and then you better figure out how to protect your hearing. Yeah, I love it because there's you. You may not realize there are times though a siren goes by, you may not realize how loud these things mm -hmm. are. And uh, or you're on a construction site, or yeah, you're at a concert. There's there's plenty of times. Even a movie these days can be ninety or hundred decibels. So having your watch go, mm, yeah, this is dangerous. Uh, it's a great idea. And you know, I carry earplugs with me because mm -hmm. it's too late for me. I've already ruined my hearing, but I, at least I don't want it to get any worse. So I carry um, uh, earplugs designed for listening to music. So you know, some of it gets through. Yeah, it's, uh, they're good. They're called they're eargasm. Mm. is the name not a great name but they work very well and uh, they come in a little i should i should ah. that was good i was no i was just doing a little stretch yeah because, yeah it's uh, just the stretch time uh, it's stretch time no yeah there they are um uh, the only negative is they don't have a thing holding them together so oh yeah this little string so this is this is the compact thing so i just keep this in my um in my uh bag all the time and yeah, i always have keychain even yeah you could put it on your key they're small enough that you could put them on your keychain and then you always have ear protection so I could tie that in with a watch mm -hmm. you know these aren't expensive i think they're 25 bucks uh and i encourage most importantly young people your mm -hmm. kids 
especially teenagers. I, this is why my hearing has been damaged by listening to loud music as a teenager. Right. So encourage them to uh, to do that. And I hope Apple, one th other thing Apple could do uh, that uh, Android does, I don't know if Apple does it. What, it wait, if you start to turn it up too loud, will the iPhone say you're going, it's too loud? Uh, well, the, I know the HomePod does that. If you, you know, it says, are you sure? That's very loud. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's, I don't like that. You can turn settings on to make it, you know, not turn up too loud. You can you can control your you could, kids' could, phone. You could do that yeah. in the phone. You could say, yeah. don't turn it beyond right. this. Yeah. yeah, they've had that since the iPod. I think that's really important yeah. to protect kids' hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to our mail bag. Here's an interesting one. Not really a question, but um, a question for you. A moral question if you will, from Michael from Australia. You, he writes- Me? Yeah. Okay. He said, Leo and mm. others in the tech industry often talk about security and privacy as being so important in today's world. More so everyday people who want their devices to work, to be reliable and do everything they want. Leo has also highlighted a few times that if security and privacy are important to you, you should definitely use an Apple device, especially iOS. On the radio show a few weeks ago, he said no other device was as secure as an iPhone. If this is true- why do you still promote Samsung and Android and Motorola and OnePlus and HTC and Huawei? If this is true, why do you still use Android devices? Because I, well, <laughs> uh, notice in the first paragraph, if you want to be private and secure, secure less so, privacy more so. Um, so there's a couple of thoughts I have. First of all, yeah, uh, every security expert I talked to, including Phil Zimmerman of PGP, the guy who created pretty good privacy encryption and is a leading privacy advocate has been for two decades he says i only carry an iphone but then he adds another clause after that and i never install third-party apps on it mm. because as we've learned washington post just did an article about this and of course when whatsapp was hacked on the iphone uh, we learned it's the, the problem is apple can do everything to protect your privacy but the minute you put a third-party app on there and give it permissions to work uh, you are often leaking privacy and uh, impacting your security. The WhatsApp hack uh, affected an iPhone and allowed uh, a nation state to call your WhatsApp. Not even You don't even have to answer. They could call in the middle of the night and they could take over your iPhone and it worked on the iPhone. So <clears throat> Apple can, of course, do a better, does a better job in security because it locks everything down. Um, doesn't guarantee security or privacy. So uh, I think I'm, uh, smart enough to use iOS in a secure and private way, but I'm also smart enough to use Android in a secure and private mm -hmm. way. And so, and it's, you could say the same thing, why do you use Windows? Mm -hmm. Why do you use Mac OS? Why, why do, do you, you go on the internet? Why do you go on the internet? <laughs> so we all have to make this decision about uh, what we're willing to, what, what we're willing to risk. And I think it's unfortunate, but uh, if it, we also need to become security experts. So mm -hmm. the reason I tell people, especially on the radio, where I think I'm, I'm talking to a more general audience, to use iPhones is if you don't want to do all of that, well, the iPhone will probably be a better choice for you. But honestly, I don't feel less secure or less private on Android. I, uh, you know, as soon as you install Google Maps on on iPhone, it's going to give this give Google the same information it gives gives you on an Android phone. So, f you you know me, I'm not a huge privacy. I'm not concerned for myself about privacy, but I have of late been more concerned for everybody else about privacy. Yeah. It's too late for me. It's like uh, you're hearing. Too yeah, late. too late for me. <laughs> so yeah, I recommend that um, you know I, I don't think that this is a great as a blanket recommendation because using uh, an iPhone and installing WhatsApp until very recently meant you had zero security and privacy if somebody targeted you. So it isn't it's not guaranteed if you're not going to care about it enough to really you know protect yourself. Use iOS. Mm -hmm. But it's not a guarantee by any means. Right. I mean, Apple isn't perfect. They are better, in my opinion. But they've also pushed everyone else to be better. It's going to be interesting because Apple clearly has seen that privacy is a hot button. And at WWDC, they really made it clear that they were going to be the privacy company. Things like find my dot, 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 mm -hmm. which use a fairly elaborate scheme to keep from giving away your location and let but nevertheless let you know where your lost device is, is, is really sophisticated. A lot of work and work that Google will never do with Android. Probably Microsoft will never do. It's going to be interesting to watch because I think Microsoft's watching Apple closely to see if being the privacy company is a, 
is a good way to make money. Apple pays a price for that. Siri is not as smart. Apple can't offer you as many suggestions. They're working really hard to, to improve that with some interesting technologies. Uh, they, they call it differential privacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, while it's not yet, academics are still a little skeptical about this term and whether Apple is really implementing it properly. Uh, because that's another thing Apple does that security gurus do not like, which is they don't tell you everything they're doing. In fact, some have noted right after that WhatsApp uh, debacle that because Apple locks iOS down so much, security experts can't even tell if an iPhone has been compromised. They can't get into it enough to see if it's been compromised. So Apple pursues a, pl a, a path some call security through obscurity uh, by keeping people in the dark about what they're doing, they hope that will add another layer of security, uh, but it also makes it harder for security researchers. It's a complicated story. That's why I say the simplified version on the radio particularly is default iPhone. Mm -hmm. But uh, frankly, I prefer the um, Galaxy S10 Plus. I think it's a great phone and I know how to use it securely and safely, so I do. We have a video question from Dominic uh, from Sydney, Australia. Hello, Megan. Hello, Leo. Dom here from Sydney, Australia. Love iOS today. Love Mac Break Weekly. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you, Dom. I have a question regarding how to better control my HomePod using my Apple Watch. The problem I have is that at times my HomePod does not detect my shlomo command. <laughs> Perhaps it's my pronunciation. I don't know. My iPhone detects it no problem. However, at times when I call out to my HomePod, yeah, gets my both. iPhone will respond. Yeah. Then at other times when I call out to my iPhone, my HomePod will respond. I get that the devices uh, talk to each other and make a decision amongst themselves as to which one to respond, but that's not always accurate. I seem to be struggling with either H. Lomo being recognized by the correct device or not at all. I would love to say something like, hey, HomePod, or hey, iPhone, or hey, Apple Watch, or hey, iMac, but I don't think that's going to happen. My question is, is there a way that I can better control directing my shlomos using my Apple Watch, even if I activate Siri using my digital crown? So, for example, is there a way that I can even push my crown and say something like, play Billie Eilish on my study HomePod? Sorry, I can't do that on your Apple Watch. Yeah. I can play music. Yeah. Am I missing something here? I can't no. I, I can pause and I can skip music with my watch once the HomePod is playing, but I can't trigger it. Seems like an obvious feature, but perhaps I'm not doing something right. Really grateful for any advice you can yeah. offer. Thank you, Dom. Dom, by the way, is the, in the, the fabulous rock and roll band ACDC. <laughs> No, I don't know. <laughs> Did you? Could you read what the shirt was? No, the autographed no, shirt. I, didn't, I would but like I'll, to read. I'll that. ask him. Clearly, a rock and roll star. Um, you, you share. Uh, we share that, right? We all share that frustration. Yeah, I, I should explain. By the way, that Shlomo. People are going to wonder why he keeps saying Shlomo. If you don't watch Mac Break Weekly, that's what Andy Anako uses instead of saying S I R I because he doesn't mm -hmm. want to. We all we. In fact, Andy has come up with pseudonyms for all of the devices. Mm -hmm. uh, Alyosha. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> What was, I can't remember what he does for uh, the Goog, but anyway, uh, and then Shlomo, and uh, he has something for the Goog. Guillermo, that's it. It's Alyosha, Guillermo, and Shlomo. Okay. So, John is saying Jeeves or something, or G? No, I like Guillermo. Yeah, I do too. Okay, Guillermo. <laughs> anyway, uh yeah, that's a problem, right? Yes, I do. I do have one tip for him that I did uh, find and it, you know it's it's very old fashioned. But if you don't want your iPhone to respond, turn it upside face down. down. Yeah, yeah, face down. So if you just have get in the habit of putting it face down, it won't be the first to respond. I have uh, uh, hue lights that I turn off at night when I go to bed, and I I could do it either through uh, Google or I mean, sorry, Guillermo or Shlomo, <laughs> and, and I or Alyosha. All three are uh, set up with the hue lights. So, you know, but every time I say any of those commands, mm -hmm. 15 devices all over the house go, bleep, wake yeah. up. And it's just, you know, in theory, 
uh, the closest device, the device that's hearing you best, will be the one that responds. But I found that's not always the case. No. In fact, it seems like the HomePod always takes it, yeah. no matter what. Yeah, and so I think you can rename your HomePod. Like, if you have several HomePods, you can say living room HomePod or, you know, but you still room. say, hey, Shlomo. Yeah, you still have, but you could say play, you know, Beyonce on my living all room of, home pod. All of this will go away, and I don't know what's taking so long. Mm -hmm. When these companies finally allow you to create your own trigger words, mm -hmm. it's not impossible. It was on the Moto phones way back when with the first Moto X, which is five years ago. You could say, in fact, I did. I had my trigger word was help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Thinking that would never trigger unless I explicitly wanted right. it to. You should be able to name each device unique trigger words. It would. It's a simple thing to do. Yeah. On the phone and the tablet, and I guess I would guess even the HomePod, there's plenty of processing power and plenty of memory to record a trigger word. If mm -hmm. we could do it on the Moto X, why can't you do it on these? I understand maybe the Amazon Echo is too, too slow, too stupid to do it. <laughs> But honestly, and I, f I, I figure, I feel this is going to be universal in a year or two because this is a universal problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, or maybe it'll be a short, a short, maybe a shortcut could help. Like I, think well, yeah, you heard Rosemary said you could say, play this music on my living room HomePod. Right. Yeah. So, but that's also that's a, a little too complicated yeah. if you ask me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, There's no good answer, Dom. Thank you for the question. I have another question that has been a great mystery. Um, this is from Brian, and it's an audio question. I love hey, it. this is Brian Deffinger from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hey, Brian. And just calling. Got a question to see if anyone else is experiencing this. Um, one of my favorite things uh, about Apple is Apple Music. I really enjoy it, and I love Shuffle. It's one of my favorite features. Um, but at the same time, it gives me a great headache because um, I've got a great big music library and um, I also add Apple Music, uh, their music to my library. And so I shuffle it and it's <laughs> awesome to just That's get surprised what I do too. by mm -hmm. yeah. a song I haven't heard in a while yeah. or you know, be surprised by a great song. But what happens is when I hit shuffle, um, I keep hearing the same songs what? over and over again. There'll be, you know, random songs intersp interspersed in between, but then every time that I shuffle, I still hear this, a lot of the same songs. So, well, that's broken. Um, wondering if anyone else has this problem or if there's something that I can do to stop that from happening. So this, right, is, that, this is that pseudo-random number generator mm -hmm. problem we've talked about before, which is that random is not re on a computer is not really random. Mm -hmm. um, but I have you experienced this? Sometimes. Let me just shuffle. Let me just see what I'm going to get here. I'm gonna, okay. Let's start with Billy the Kid, the complete ballet. Starts very quietly. And I hear this a lot because it is the alphabetically first mm -hmm. song. Right. Let's play sh press shuffle. Now I got Grits, Queen of the Sun, and Piggies. I'm a fabulous, fabulous vegetarian. Take 12. <laughs> now let's, <laughs> let's close this. Okay, just so we, just no memory, no memory. Oh, I see why. Apple Music is in the dock, of course, as it should be. <laughs> Once again, start with Billy the Kid. Now, in theory, if your theory is correct, if I press shuffle, I should get the same list of next. No. Well, Wild okay, is the wind. Well, okay, so that's the start of the sunshine. shuffle. Once you shuffle, that's the start of the shuffle. Ah. Once you press shuffle, you're starting the shuffle okay. sequence. So allow me to introduce myself. Oh, but see, it's going to be, because then I have to search through. I think this is a mystery, but I, I know other people I'll have experiment. We got to experiment. Can you okay. do it? Uh, so, in other words, I have to start by shuffling. Mm -hmm. Okay. All kinds of time. All right, I'm going to stop. Now I have to find all kinds of time, which is kind of annoying. Um, how do I even do that? Oh, here we go. All, all kinds of chill. All kinds of kinds. <laughs> Uh, of time. Apparently, I don't actually. I don't even have that. So, <laughs> I can't. I can't do it because the song doesn't exist. How could that even be? Welcome, Interstate Manager. Fountains of Wayne. All kinds of time. So, on the Mac Rumors forum, forum, they a lot of people have experienced this. So it does happen. I think it's because it's a coinky dink. Okay. Well, uh, Julian on the Mac Rumors forum says the best way is to. Not select shuffle on the playlist. 
Scroll down and select tap a track to start playing from the playlist. Then scroll down on the now playing track and select shuffle. You will then load the entire playlist in random order below. You can even oh. drag, rearrange tracks in the list. Works every time. See, yeah, if you're doing a playlist, that might actually be different. That's what I suggested because that's what I do to, to prevent this from happening. I have many playlists with hundreds of songs each. And so then, then I can't, you know, if the song that I'm sick of hearing all the time right. isn't in there. But See, if you shuffle on your entire library, 8,000 songs, the chances of a song repeating is pretty low. Mm -hmm. But not would, if it think. catches that song that you've heard and goes in the same order. I don't know about that same order thing. Um, all right. So before we get to our app caps, I think we should talk a little bit more about privacy. Let's talk about Express VPN. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are on an open Wi-Fi access point, if you are at a hotel, if you are sitting on a cruise ship, you are on the same Wi-Fi as everybody else, the same network. And that means anybody else on that network sitting across from you in that hoodie, that guy with a hoodie and four computers in front of him, that could be a hacker watching what you're up to. Or it could be my 14-year-old son. <clears throat> or just hackers don't always son. wear hoodies. No, but they... You don't you need actually, to know what they look if like. If you were a smart hacker, you would wear a necktie and yeah, suit. right. Uh, can you spot the Fed? Uh, ExpressVPN is the way to protect yourself from that, to protect your privacy. Even your internet service provider these days or your carrier is spying on where you're going, and they sell that to third parties. We know that. ExpressVPN is a virtual private network which protects you against other people on your network, including your ISP. It is a really great way to secure and anonymize your internet browsing. It encrypts your data, hides your IP address, your public address. And because ExpressVPN has servers all over the world, this is kind of a nice side benefit of this. When you do emerge on the public internet, you can choose what country you're emerging in. So geographic restrictions are a thing of the past. Now, I know you all know about VPNs, and I get a lot of questions. What's the best? I'm telling you right now, expressvpn.com slash iOS today. Less than $7 a month. It's the best VPN protection because they do all of the things to anonymize you that they need to. Not all VPNs are created equal. ExpressVPN is fast. They do no logging. <clears throat> they don't know who you are. So even when subpoenaed, they can't tell anybody about what you've been doing. <clears throat> 30 days money back guarantee. So there's no risk. It's the number one rated VPN service on Tech Radar. It's also my number one. Protect your online activity today. Find out how to get three extra months free when you sign up for a year package. That's the best deal at expressvpn.com slash iOS today. And again, 30-day money-back guarantee, so no risk. Express, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash iOS today. We thank them for their support. See, I love this. And, and we thank you for supporting us by going to expressvpn.com slash iOS today. And you'll get three months free, which is nice. No compromises. Mm -hmm. Continue on, old Megan Maroney. <laughs> I was going to say Alex in the chat room says he uses a smart playlist that includes type as music to weed out audiobooks, podcasts, voicemails, et cetera. It doesn't oh. solve the problem, but the problem I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. That's a good idea. I yeah, I have like old Gizwiz jingles in my yeah. playlist. I have all sorts of weird yeah. stuff in there. Although it's fun every once in a while. You know, you're listening to, you know, Handel's Messiah and mm -hmm. then you hear... It's fun. But then to hear like fa la 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 in July, I hate that. Or I know. any other holidays. Oh, yeah, get the Christmas music out yeah, of there. Yeah, get it yeah, out Yeah, there. yeah, that's a good idea. All right, it's time uh, again for the app cap segment where we wear hats, which we call caps. These are actually caps. Roger Dodger, it's W6TWT, Whiskey 6 Tango, Whiskey Tango, coming yes. at you across the airwaves at 75 meters <laughs> on the AM dial. I have a Vancouver hat, I believe. Is it baseball season? Is it boys' summer? It is summer baseball time? season, but the Vancouver, what are they? I don't even know. I think that's a that's a I don't know what the hell that is. It's a, I don't know what team that is. I don't know either, it, but I can't um, is there an animal on the I don't know what that is. Uh, as long as you don't wear a Toronto Raptors hat, you're okay. Yeah, exactly. Um all right, so uh, you said you had an organized closet. I have a disorganized closet. I am so organized. Shirts on this rack, blazers on this rack, mm -hmm. pants on this rack, fun okay. shirts on that rack. Okay. And then, and then, 
after I wear something, it's left to right. So when I put fresh shirts in, they go on the right. After I wear it, I hang it on or the other way around. Fresh shirts go on the left, and I hang it on the right. That way I, I, I rotate. But you do a good job of well, rotating. I'm amazed I, how well you rotate. Thank you very much. But I don't do that because my closet is Marie Kondoed, which means Ooh. that the clothes don't like that, what you're talking about. They, they don't, don't like that? No, no. The clothes like to be arranged from darker colors to lighter colors, from heavier to Do you do lighter. that? Oh, yes. <laughs> I also fold, I roll all my you know, items and I fold mm, the Marie Kondo way. That I is can, how I stay sane. I can see whether a jacket's light or dark. I know, I'm more concerned about when I wore it last than what color it is. Well, I am also concerned about where I, when I wore last things. Can you so find I did, that out? Well, yes, well, with this app. So not with You know, here's Kondo. a good tip. Mm -hmm. When you, uh, when you uh, January 1st, you got to remember mm -hmm. this, January 1st, turn all your hangers around. I knew you were going to say that. You know that one? You can't do that either. Then your your closet <laughs> becomes I don't know. The idea the being that as, whenever you wear something, you reverse the hanger, right. and at the end of the year, all the stuff that's not reversed, GRO, get rid of. Yes, and I would do that. I've heard that tip, but I also don't, I don't like do that, that because I, my my hangers all have to be identical and they all have to be facing the same way. Really? Yes. Um, and like you said, I don't like to. Wear, I don't mind so you wearing. Things. Have Con Marie to your closet? I have. Nice. Yeah, I I'm have. jealous. Um, I'll come to yours if you want. No, no, no. My, my <laughs> philosophy is just get a bigger closet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, my philosophy is just to take more of my husband's side. That's okay. exactly what Lisa does. <laughs> um, okay, so. <laughs> That's mine now. I did twit on Sunday and it was playing and Kevin said, look, you're wearing the same dress. And, you know, I wanted to say, Kevin, that is a similar dress, but not the same. Not I would the never same. wear the same thing on Sunday that I was going to wear doesn't. on Tuesday. She's very good But I that. have a hard uh, time keeping track of this. So. I uh, found the creator of our app last week, the My App Cap, When Did I? Um, I had some Heidi uh, Pilly Pass, and I pronounced her name wrong again, but um, we had some conversations and I realized that she is just as uh, organized as I am. You called it OCD, but we call it organized <laughs> or desperate to become organized. So she recommended style books. So style books. here, and I've begun adding my closet. So here's my closet. So I've added um, many of my tops and organized them. Sleeveless tops are here. T-shirts are here. Uh, sweaters are here blouses and you can see that are um, those your actual clothes so i took photos of them wow so how did you get the white background um that does that for you oh nice except if your clothes are white and then it makes everything so you As can it you know yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. like i could you um, have an invisibility edit dress. this um <laughs> edit the image and then like nice. i could you just remove the background so, so you if just I, hang it on the on the closet door right and it, yeah. it does it all for so you so if it's white and black you could you could hang it on a different color like i could hang it on a blue sheet yeah, yeah, yeah. or something but yeah, yeah you can remove nice. the background that's really sweet there. um and then i can save the changes there so then i have a calendar here oh. so uh and you just drag the outfit to that calendar right so oh. the dress that i wore was this one um not the one that i'm wearing now See? obviously See? kevin <laughs> actually and this yeah i wore this dress so i can mark it there and i can um so i can be notified i have my style stats so I can I could add the price of everything, so I could have a total closet value in case. Let's just say I uh, you retired, I lost my job, I had no money, and I just sell all my clothes. Here's how I would know um, how much money I had in clothing. I could do my 50 most recently added. Um, the this war has really worn organized. history, so wow. I can know I wore that one day. Once I get this, I'm like you wore that 20 times, or maybe you wore it zero times. Right. So the least worn. And also it has a packing section. So if you were gonna go, here's all the trips I'm gonna take, New York, Los Angeles, Paris, London. You can see what you wore and you can also see like your most packed. So which, which items did you take on vacation the most? That's a good sign of something that you enjoy wearing if you actually take it on vacation. Like some people say like pack for a vacation, get rid of everything except the stuff you take on vacation. Um, so you can also, um, See, talk to a, see style expert guides, refashioning nice. thrift store finds. Um, you can have read all this interesting stuff. And what one thing that is frustrating to me is that I have the app on my iPhone and my iPad. And if you want to share, you have to actually send the things, the send the pictures, which I think is weird. I don't know why it's not just all in iCloud. I haven't quite figured that out. 
Um, but you can also, let's say you're, you want to buy new clothes, you can add it to looks. So um, I can just add new items. Like if I find um, uh, something online that I wanted to um, wear, let's see, let's uh, get out of way. My, um, let's say I want to buy something from Madewell. Um, and I think, hmm, oh, I like that top then I can add that. So I can, um, if it's a top, I can also see which pants I already have that, you know, might go with it. So there you go. That is uh, organized. <laughs> it is. It, you I know don't, what? See, it's I don't, fun. I'm a guy, so I can wear this outfit over and over right. and over and again. Right, and I can wear this outfit over and over again. No, but you I, can't. Because <laughs> you're not I a can. guy. <laughs> I don't wish to. We should do this with our hats, though. Yeah, we really sh we should put. Yeah, we should do a style book just no, for our hats. I, I do so feel like, one. especially women on TV, that there is a pr there's pressure on you not to repeat. Whereas I don't think. I mean, does anybody look at the anchor? You know, the anchor man's suit and say, "Oh, he wore that on Wednesday." No, I don't think so. What are you saying that things are different for men and women? Never <laughs> would I say that. Never. <laughs> um, yeah, it's true. Uh, but again, like I don't, ha I don't have to. Do wear you feel it. pressure though? I mean, like uh, well, I think that's not question. unusual. I remember at Tech TV, of course. Right. People well, did we feel had, pressure. For a while, we had a wardrobe. That was nice. And you know, they would take a picture of you every day. Yeah. And say, and they had a, and they had a lookbook mm -hmm. that they would put all that stuff in, right. and say, yeah, Megan wore this November fifth, mm -hmm. and then they'd rotate through it. But that back then, also, I would wear T-shirts a lot, so it was like I'd wear like because um, you had funny saying people would send them. Like yeah. I still have a Cult of the Dead Cow T-shirt that somebody that's sent. something to save. That's yeah, important. I have it. Yeah, you should wear it when you interview the Cult of the Dead Cow guy. Jason interviewed him. It oh, went up on shoot. Friday, and I oh, forgot shoot. to bring it. Um, but yeah, so uh, it was easier then. But yeah, it is it is a challenge, um, you know. But it's we still live in a, live in a society where women's clothes are uh, more important than men's clothes. Should point out, Megan was on Sunday's twit. Did a great job. It was a really great twit. It was really fun. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, we we haven't seen Alex Wilhelm in a while, so he was. It was you, him, and uh, some person, Harry McCracken, <laughs> on my right. And that was a really fun uh, episode. Yeah, there of we are. But yeah, that was a really fun show. I felt like I interrupted people and talked over everyone. And then good. I was looking at the YouTube comments and someone said, uh, I barely talked at all. No, no, it's good. Everybody should interrupt and talk over. Mm -hmm. That's what we do here. Yeah. That's kind of our uh, brand. I'm used to it with you, but with other people, <laughs> it was actually really fun. It's fun. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll have you back next year. So style book. Um, yeah, <laughs> Make sure exactly. you don't wear the same next dress. Next year. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, we will have you back soon. It's uh, It's not free, and I think it's worth it if you want. Looks I, great. You know, actually, it looks it's not really good. Necessary, but it's fun, and well, it, I think it's good because sometimes your closet just gets so full, and you don't even know what's in it. And you're not wearing stuff. Yeah, you and might so. have a great outfit that you forgot about. Yeah, and be nice to wear. Exactly. Yeah. We uh, the reason that we don't have you on more often is I don't want you to have to work six days a week. You know, you work hard Thank during the you. weekend, so. Twit is a Sunday show, so mm -hmm. I don't like to bring in our regular hosts unless, mm -hmm. you know, once in a while, because I want everybody to know how great you are, but not Thank all you. the time. Otherwise, you'd be working six I'd days a week. burn me out, and I wouldn't burn have enough out. clothes to wear. <laughs> you'd run out of clothing. <laughs> so this uh, pick of the week is actually from Johnny Jett on, uh, mm. on um, Sunday, our travel guy on the radio show, and I loved it so much. I thought this, I'm going to, so I'll show you real quickly on the iPhone because it's an iPhone app. It's not an iPad app. It's, it's called Dawn Chorus and it comes from Carnegie, the Carnegie Museums. Uh, so it's, so it's free and it allows you to create alarms using birds and a huge variety of birds, ruby crowned kinglet, black capped chickadee, brown creeper. Let me do it on my iPad. Uh, it, unfortunately, it'll be a little bit harder to see because it's, you know, it's an iPhone app and I guess I'll have to do that. But you won't, this way you can hear it. So I can show you, I've got slots, one, two, three, four, five slots. Um, I can, there's a blue jay. I don't think jays should be in here. Oh, but the wood thrush sounds good. How about a yellow belly sap sucker? Okay. Oh, no. No woodpeckers. No, no, no. Uh, what's a Swainson's thrush? Huh? Oh, yeah, song sparrow for sure. How about a tufted titmouse? Just because the name is so funny. Now, this is going to be my alarm. I can set the alarm for whatever time I want. And when I wake up, this is what I'll hear. The dawn chorus. Oops, I got that woodpecker. Damn that woodpecker. They keep showing up. 
Yeah, I could do without the woodpecker, but other than that. <laughs> Where's the woodpecker? Get rid of him. You know, it's the way it is in my house. How about, let's see. Okay, those three. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Isn't that because nice? Because it really sounds like you, you've got birds. Uh, since we're killing most of the birds out there, or cats are, then, you know, at least we have this. And then uh, turn on the binoculars, and uh, you can see what they look like. In fact, maybe do a little bird spotting. There are some wonderful birding apps for iOS. If you're a serious birder, you already know all about all of those. But this is kind of fun to see the birds. Uh, I think these are mostly East Coast birds, mm. like the Baltimore Oriole. Mm -hmm. And you can learn a little bit more about them. And then uh, this is from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. So that's why it's free, but it's also got great information. That's a Baltimore Oriole. Are there other Orioles that aren't Baltimore Orioles? Yes, there are, as oh. a matter of fact. Hmm. I don't know why the icon is a blue jay. Because I don't think the blue jay is exactly what people want to hear in the morning. We have a blue jay. We have a family of blue jays in our uh, backyard. What do they sound like? Oh, yeah. You don't want to hear that. No. Any J pretty much is out. Jays, crows, get rid of those. These are not I mean, songbirds. To each his own. Well, the nice thing is these blue jays are very smart. Yeah. We uh, Lisa has discovered what they eat by putting a variety of foods out. Oh. And they eat the cat food pretty regularly. <laughs> but they also like uh, sunflower seeds, unsalted, please. Oh. Pecans. But they won't touch pumpkin seeds. Hmm. Isn't that weird? That is weird. But they have come to expect a little bit of uh, of something. Dawn Chorus is a collaboration between the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, Bird Safe Pittsburgh, and the Innovation Studio at Carnegie Museums of Pittsburgh. They've really done a nice job. It's beautiful. And, it, you know, it's simple. That's all it does. But it's free, and it's uh, I think it's great. So I set your it. alarm with beautiful bird song. Oh, geez. 6.32 in the morning tomorrow. I'm going to hear that. We have... A lot of bird song out our window, including peacocks. So I don't really need this. Wait, you have peacocks really outside your window? Yeah, I told you. The, I, and I thought you were joking. The peacocks neighbors. sound like um, they have. How can I describe it? It's basically a blood curdling scream. Let's hear it. Ah! Wait, your neighbors own peacocks or? Uh, it's unclear if I think they were wild or they were released. But there's qu there's quite a family of peacocks. So here. not wild turkeys. Do you we have wild turkeys as well. What do they sound like? <laughs> Don't eat me for Thanksgiving. Uh, no, you wouldn't want to because they're stringy. Yeah, you wouldn't. No. Want to. Yeah, they're beautiful birds. We have a lot of birds. We live in the country and mm -hmm. we get a lot of birds. And I love we're the lucky. bird song in the morning. Uh, if I were ever to move out of the country, I would want bird dawn chorus because mm -hmm. it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Well, it's that time again. The end. <gasps> the no. Well, thank you all for joining us. And thanks especially to Rosemary Orchard. She was great. Yeah, she was great. Inspires um, me. I downloaded Coda and Working Copy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to writing some shortcuts. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, go to rosemaryorchard.com to see everything that mm -hmm. she's doing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be away for the next two weeks. I'm going on vacation. You're going to Kauai. I'm going to Kauai. Bring the gypsy guides. I will. I already yeah. downloaded them. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. So Micah Sargent's going to be here for both weeks. Love that. Yeah, Micah's um, one of our favorites. And we'll be talking about something very interesting and ios -y. I don't know what it is yet. Probably but chihuahuas. <laughs> it might be coffee or he chihuahuas. Loves his chihuahuas. Um, so yeah, you're going you're gonna to be on your own. I mean, with Micah, but... It'll be a lot of fun. We'll here. miss you, but I think you're going to have a wonderful time. I think this would be a great dress for Kauai. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I think, are you, uh, uh, what are you doing? Just going to go with a fam and Yeah, we rented a house. It's out? just the five of us. Nice. And we haven't been on a family vacation that's just the five of us. I think, and you know, it's going to be, we're going to have to get used to being together again. Oh, you're um, going to have a great time. Yeah. And uh, have some shave ice. We're going to have some shave ice. Yeah. We're going to do some snorkeling. Oh, um, fun. Try, I'll try to stay off the You're going to love it. And yeah, don't, no tweeting allowed. No tweeting. Don't. No. 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 That's Megan Maroney. She'll be back in three weeks. I'm sorry to say. I'm Leo Laporte. If you want to watch us do the show live, it's usually around 9 a.m. Pacific. Although I can arrange to have a text message sent to you if it's not going to be. Oh, 9 a.m. Yeah. Pacific. Yeah. That's noon Eastern time. Uh, that would be, what does it say there? 1600 UTC? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if I if my math is correct, you can uh, you can watch live at twit.tv slash live or listen. We've got streams of audio and video. You, you can also uh, join the chat room if you're watching live at irc.twit.tv. That runs 24-7. Great people in there. Uh, a lot of fun, family-friendly, irc.twit.tv.
TV. If you can't watch live or listen live, please, by all means, subscribe to audio or video, or you just download back episodes at our website, twit.tv slash iOS. Email Megan at twit.tv. While you're gone, will you be uh, accepting email? Um, <laughs> sure, I'll be accepting them, but... Um, you won't be reading them, I Yeah, hope. so iOS Today at twit.tv, because I know you've been checking that a little bit. I check it all the yeah, time. Yeah, iOS Today at twit.tv, okay. so yeah. We'll get some questions in. Mm -hmm. We love the audio and video. Thank you for mm -hmm. sending that, Dom, and... Uh, uh, whoever. Uh, I forgot his name already. Uh, Brian. Brian. That's right. Thank you, Dom and Brian, for your audio and video uh, questions. Uh, please send those along, and we will look forward to talking to you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye. Okay.